G'day, you're listening to the Big Breakdown Podcast with Chris Stafford and Harrison Marshall. Take it away, fellas. Hello and welcome along to Season 3 of the Big Breakdown Podcast, where in this season we are looking at coaching skills and today we are looking at coaching behaviours. Um, Harrison, we've got a, another good guest on today to chat about uh, an area of coaching that uh, can can heavily influence both activity structure and general learner engagement that we've spoken about in the previous episode. Yes, yeah, coaching behaviours. It's um, I think I think we I think we're all in agreement here that it can really underpin a session, an environment, if not a whole culture of what you want to create in your team, in your club, in your school, in your college, in your university, wherever, whatever environment you're in. You know, we've spoken around culture before, our how our behaviours as coaches underpin that. And this has got a cracking episode now with um, in which we look to explore that in, in a little bit more depth. Yeah, I agree. It's going to be a, another great discussion with a, with another great guest. So today we are joined by Neil Holmes. Neil is a sports coaching lecturer at Leeds Beckett University. Neil has worked with many professional organisations across a number of sports and holds multiple coaching qualifications with over 25 years of experience in sports coaching. Neil has taught across a number of courses within the School of Sport and his main area of expertise is in athletic performance and how to coach a team with physical education setting. Neil is a qualified level three athletics coach and has worked with Leeds Rhinos, Warrington Wolves, uh, Yorkshire Carnegie and Bradford City Football Club with responsibility for improving human movement. He has been involved in coaching and teaching from grassroots to elite level for over 25 years, and he enjoys helping to develop the coaches and teachers of tomorrow and aspires to foster a lifelong love of sport and health. Neil joins us today to chat about coaching behaviours. Neil, how are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Um, nice early starts the day, feeling fresh and excited to speak to uh, you and Harrison. Well, you know, we've been promising you a gig since the first season, haven't we? So we, we finally found a, a topic for you to come on and, uh, and chat to us about. So we're talking about coaching behaviours today. Um, and I think sort of an outline to sort of start with is one of the reasons I thought it might be good to have you on. From, I mean, you are, although I'm sure people at work will laugh hearing this, but you are an academic, really. And we did teach on sports coaching together and you were doing coaching practice where we covered coaching behaviours quite a lot. So can you just outline sort of what coaching behaviours are and, and give us some examples of um, what they are in practice. Oh, crikey. Well, very kind to call me a, an academic. Um, I, I see myself as a, a practitioner and, and, you know, there's these theories there and I'm trying to put them into practice. Um, so, yeah, very kind. Um, but I, I suppose in a nutshell, coaching behaviours, it's about understanding that we have these interactions with other people and every interaction that we have has um, an impact on them. It, it causes something to happen. And it's being aware of these. And in our coaching space, it's about how we might give instruction and what type of instruction that we're giving them. So is it going to be technical information? Is it going to be tactical information? Um, is it how we get across uh, a key point to somebody? So how we might give a demonstration? And who might give that demonstration? And it's it's working out the best way of creating that healthy interaction um, where a performer would develop and be stimulated to learn. Yeah, and uh, uh, in previous episodes, we kind of we we, we discussed around um, you know practice design and and how that affects kind of kind of learner engagement. And oh, from listening to you there and through you know, other conversations Chris and I have had with, pre with previous guests, um, would you, you probably, uh, you could, there's probably an argument for uh, coaching behaviours to have as big an impact, if not more an impact on, on, on learner engagement. Is that something that you'd agree or, or can disagree with? Uh, definitely. Um, I definitely agree. Uh, I think if I look at my own coaching, um, I think I'll say back in the day, I was very much this is what I'm going to deliver today and you are going to learn that I have a plan and you are going to, you know, take part in this plan and you will do. And by the end of it, this is where we'll be. And nothing's going to be a problem. Um, I'm, I may not know the performer's name. I may not know anything about them, um, but we're all going to get this done. And at the end, 
you know, we'll all skip off into the sunset. And and it isn't like that. It's everybody is, you know, we talk about um, something called dynamical systems. And each each person is a dynamical system. There's so much going on with this, this system. Um, and what we need to do is try and understand as much about the other person as possible. It's about building relationships to the point where you know how to act with a certain person and what to say to them and when and be able to read you know their feelings their moods you know their situation so yeah it's a massive it, it's massive um if we're looking to get success out of any coaching that we do and that, and that kind of goes back to a lot of the kind of the themes around we touched on it in season one of um understanding your who um, and then it was a re- recurring theme throughout seasons two and, and, and three so far. So, you know, understanding your participants, how they how they interact with other 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 players, how they interact with the environment, and then how they interact with us as you know with us as coaches. Um, when we talk around coaching behaviours, I think for me, in terms of when I speak to other coaches, they get caught up in that loophole that it's 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 often right. It's just my coaching behaviours on the pitch. I would argue that it's also our coaching behaviors off the pitch. It's, it's every interaction that we have with, um, with with a, with a player, with 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 fellow coaches. How can I, don't, so I guess how can we make coaches kind of more aware of the, of that of that importance that you know, how we are and our behaviors in front of in front of in front of players and other coaches are is 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 that important? Because I know that for some of them. You know, there, there's bigger fish to fry. It's like, what should I be teaching them? What should I be, um, you know, what, what should they be learning? But actually, uh, you know, how is, how would you how would you make coaches aware that their behaviours are equally, or if not more, important? That's really really difficult. I think <laughs> you've, you've just you're not making it easy for me. Um, one of the things that we've got is to understand, I suppose, the coach, um, and I know that you and I have had discussions. Um, before about this that it's first of all who is the coach and if this is a parent you know a mum or a dad um, or a volunteer um, what is their perception of coaching and is their perception of coaching when all the cones are out everything's set and they blow the whistle to call everybody over it's the switch and that's how they see it and I think for for years I think all of us would be guilty of saying that is when it happens. And then it finishes the moment we blow the final whistle, we say our our ending statements and everybody disperses. Um, So is it that we've got out the car late, um, you know, we're feeling a bit rough, we're telling everybody we're feeling rough, we get onto the pitch, we set everything up, coach everybody and afterwards we're off to the bar. Now that's, that's, that could happen. And I see that happening, but, we only focus on the bit in the middle. Was that bit acceptable? And it's it's the it's the perception that people have of us before and after the interaction because we can't players can't flick a switch, can they? They can't just turn it on. Um, we need to create an environment, and that takes time before the session. Um, and and it is about our behaviours. Are we the first one at training? There's a behaviour. Are we set up before all the players turn up? That is a behaviour. Have we planned the session and have the right equipment? That is a behaviour. Have we contacted everybody to remind them to bring their gum shields and their drinks bottles? These are behaviours. And we're trying to create this environment. So the interactions can start any time before the session. They can start, the interactions start two, three days before on social media and WhatsApp. So, it, it, and it's it's understanding that those interactions and, and the perception that people have of us starts there. And it's, it's really hard for somebody who's a volunteer coach. I do feel sorry for volunteers because it is a tough gig. But if you're a, a, a performance coach, it is every minute of every day. So have, you got, have you got some examples of some of the other sort of Coaching behaviours that that, that, that are there. So we, you're right. We generally focus on it very much being just technical and tactical. 
uh, or in general instruction rather than actually, like you said, these behaviours sort of pre and during the session. Um, you, you've got a background of team sports and individual sports. Is there much of a, with them interactions, how do you, it's obviously easier when you've got an individual athlete in front of you. How do you manage to get around and have them 30 second, one minute conversations with people in a team environment to make sure that you're, um, that you're having interactions with everyone? Does that make sense? Yeah, that nuts. You've you've made there's a couple of points there that you've highlighted. There's the individual athlete and the team, and we think about one being easier than the other. So, for most of us who work in team sports, we think working in a team, chatting to people in a team, is easy because that's what we do. And if we had to spend time with an individual, that one to one, that we'd find it really hard. We wouldn't be able to fill our time, etc. And, and I, for me personally, I find them both, um, I'd say, as, as easy. They're, they're both manageable, perhaps in slightly different ways. But with the team, can I get round to everybody and have that one-to-one connection? Um, depends on the size of the team. If I'm coaching um, a university squad where there's 30 players and I'm with them for two hours, I'm not going to get round to every player, but I'm also not going to coach them on, on my own. So um, when I'm working with big squads, there's usually maybe three, four coaches and we set challenges for us to have interactions with, you know, X amount of players to make sure that every player has had an interaction with a coach by the end of the session. If you want to catch up with more players, is that that we do that, you know, beforehand. So we set up, we're ready to go and they might be coming into training and it's just that asking them how they're doing, you know, how are they feeling today? And what are they looking to get out of the session? You know, the, just those little interactions. And then at the end, as, as they're all leaving, again, a few more interactions there. So it's amazing how quickly we can pick up a large number of them. You know, in a two-hour session, one-to-one interactions, I might, I might be able to get through eight, but I might only be able to get two. And then the others are pre and post, perhaps. And it's and it's and it's that it's that priority. I think we last last season we had um Richard Smith on um a cracking guest who 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 suggested that before every session you should have ten one minute conversations with, with with players, um, and actually don't bring up the sport that you that you're playing, and I think that's something that I know that I've come in in my environment. I know I, I'm quite a I'm quite a, a chatty chap myself, so I, I was you know having a chat away with with all of them anyway but it's something I try and I definitely try and bring into now just it's that relationship building isn't it and and for us as 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 human beings we're very complex and nuanced and and you know can we those 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 small conversations we we pick up vibes and then you know when we pick up the vibes the, the challenge for us the next is is how do we adapt our behaviors to really kind of up up uplift the energy uplift because we all want a high energy session. We want players to leave with a smile on their face and as well as learning something. What's um what would be your advice for you know for, for a kind of a, a coach who has had these 10 minute uh, 10 minute, uh, 10 one minute conversations and he just realized it's it, it, it's it's as flat as flat. Um the coach himself, he's just, he's had a bit of a tough week. Um what kind of things can he can he kind of fall back on to to first of all, uplift himself, but then is it is, 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 is something that you've tried? It, I'm sure uh, I know that I've been in that situation, and I've got some answers in my head here. But you know, I'm just you know, we've 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 had to pay big money to get you on here, so we're going to ask you some big oh, questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it, it's an act sometimes, isn't it? Coaching, we're, we're actors and actresses, um, and your world can be falling apart but you have a duty to put that to one side for that hour, two hours, however long it is, and, you know, be the best you. And, and that's, that is really, really difficult. And it takes practice because we're, the other thing with coaching behaviours is they're emotive. Coaching is emotive. Sport is emotive. And it's, it's trying to um, put, the, put things into a box. And that's the, the challenge for us. So that there have been times where um, 
not not going into too much detail, but yeah, where I felt really, really like it, really bad day, really bad day. And um, you're then at the side of a, of a, 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 a sporting event, whatever it is, and you've got these interactions to have. You've got to put the best foot forward to support your performers and, and help them to, to maximise their performance. So, and you do have to switch off. You know that afterwards you're going to go back to this storm, but just for that period of time, it, it has to be put on a shelf in a box and just put away. And, and I think with all these things, one of the, the, other, the other bits is if we haven't done lots of coaching, we don't develop the tools. You know, you're asking, you're asking here for, for answers, what would I do? Um, but that comes with, with history. And we all have our own history. So we all have different ways of dealing with things. And, and this is part of the challenge that, that I found. It, it's just the complexity of all this. Um, so we, we have a set of predetermined behaviours and everybody thinks there's a certain way that we should behave. And that's great because society says this is the way we should behave. Actually, in principle, um, your behaviours are your behaviours. And we should accept those as your behaviours, as long as, you know, society's rules are not being broken. But everybody's different, aren't they? We're all different characters. We've all got different backgrounds. We all have different dynamics away from sport. And we're coming together as this big mess. As a, and, and, and it's a team and it's all these different parts of a team. And I always like to use the, uh, the analogy of the, the A-team, you know, the, the television characters. Each one of them is different, but yet they come together and it works. And they're there to help people. And, and we're all creating these mini A-teams where we're using and understanding all these different skills that everybody has got and their different feelings and emotions at any one time and making that work for the team and their goals. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's... And that uh, having an appreciation of that is, is, is really key as well because you know, we talk about interactions with players, but then you know some players are, you know through through your behaviours and, and the way that you act and, and your judicial personality they're more likely to have more interactions with you than than they than they are with than they are potentially with me. But then vice versa, there'll be some players that go, oh, um, you know, I, I connect with Harrison. His behaviour is the way the way he is. Is that's I think that's you know giving them that giving the players that range is never it's never a bad thing I don't think because they're going to go into different environments growing up and they're going to experience completely different coaching styles completely different coaching philosophies and I think it's it's important especially when we're dealing with potentially the younger age groups and the, the those adolescents as well if we can give them as much of a, a variety both in practice design and and and, and, and coaching actually you know, what sessions look like but then the why why don't we match that with variability of um of, of different coaching styles and behaviours as well? Well, we, we should. This is it. We, we should be exposing everybody to different ideas, different philosophies. Um, and some will resonate with some and, and others with, 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 with other coaches. Um, I, I work in, in a number of environments with coaches. I don't generally singularly coach. I'm with others. So there's the interactions that I have with the other coach. Uh, my philosophy, them understanding my philosophy and my way of doing it, and but them having autonomy to be themselves and to come up with their ideas. And I might not necessarily agree with them, but I support them and I try to make sense of what they're trying to achieve and how they're going about it. And then we use reflection afterwards to see if that worked or not. And, and this sometimes I've been very dismissed. I'll give an example. Um, I'm very precious about my uh, one of my junior teams that I coach, and, and I bore everybody with them. And I was told by my rugby club that there were some guest coaches coming in to coach them. And so straight away, my emotional side, um, I, I was very offended by this. And I, take, I took a closed mindset that I know better, it's my way, I'm doing a great job, I'm the best coach for these people, my interactions are the best, and I'm not happy, this is spoiling my plan. And, on, and I was very resistant, but on the day I decided that no, we should give these, the, the children, and, and, the, and the parents, the other stakeholders, 
an opportunity to see and, and engage with other coaches and their philosophies. And I, I stood back and watched. Um, and I, I noticed that my players, through their behaviours, were getting so much from the session. Uh, they were enjoying it. Um, I saw a few drills there and, and games that I would steal and call my own. Being the good coach that I am, it's all, it's all me. Um, and it gave them something different, something that I couldn't offer them because I'm not these other coaches from this, this professional team. Um, and, and I think that's one example of, of really, you know, having that bravery to step back. I wasn't being brave. I really don't know what I was, but to be able to step back and go, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe in your process and watch what it unfolds. My fear was that I was going to have to pick up the pieces somehow and it was going to be carnage. And it wasn't. It was really good. And, and then I, I followed them with the second part of the session. And I would say that it was probably one of my favourite coaching days ever. And where we normally are maybe coaching for an hour, an hour and a half before, you know, attention drops off and performance and we go, that's enough. We were there for two and a half hours because everybody, it was a perfect learning environment. And everybody was having fun. And I think it was down to somebody else being there and they were getting a mixture of all these different coaches that, that provided that. I mean, you, you touched on a key word there, Neil, around the reflection element. But how important is it for us to plan and then reflect on the behaviours that we're going to put into a session? And, and have you got any examples of how we can reflect post-session on the impact that our behaviours have had? Uh, I think this might um, go back to, I mean, reflection is key. And it's, it's one of four elements that we should reflect on. What, what we tend to do, I think, as coaches, and when I'm talking to, it, when I'm talking to any coach at any level, um, they normally think about the things that have impacted on them the most. You know, they always reflect on the bad stuff. That tends to be something that, that, that really comes home to me is if something went wrong, it's an anchor for them. And I think, first of all, we've got to decide, right, well, our reflection, we should have a positive reflection, as well as if there's a negative. What went well? What didn't go so well? What might we change next time? These are still very, very basic levels of reflection. And But we then move on, and we've got this, I suppose we've got four key areas. We've got session objectives. We have practice structure. We have player engagement and then we have coaching behaviours and they're part of um, the coaching, planning, practice, reflective framework that you may have, have, have discussed before. And these four areas, you know, have an interaction. There's an interaction between all of them. They all affect each other. So I think for me, those would be the subsections of reflection. So I'd be taking time to reflect on, did I meet my session objectives? What was it that, that affected them? And, 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 and vice versa with coaching behaviours. What were my coaching behaviours? Because I don't think we can necessarily go in or should go in with a predetermined script. Because as, as we've already said, it's a dynamical system. If I've got 20 young players, um, when I'm coaching at an academy, um, I've got... I could have 20 players at any one time. That's 20 teenage dynamical systems. I've then got maybe 40 parents and their dynamical systems that are all watching what I'm doing, plus the dynamical systems of the other coaches, et cetera. I can't plan to go, I am going to behave this way today. You know, I'm not, I'm not coming, you know, today I am going to be this. You, you, you're reacting, your brain is constantly figuring out solutions and ways to, to communicate uh, effectively. And it's then afterwards reflecting on, um, were they the most effective way? Are there any other tools from the toolbox? And remember that the tools that we have are not necessarily ones that we prescribe. It's us understanding that our experiences you know, so if I think of yourself and Harrison, the way you will interact, the way you will behave is because of your coaching experiences. It will be a motive as to how you're feeling that day. It will be all the interactions and anything and everything that comes with you is how you behave. 
and and that's and and that is you i can't i can't say you should behave in a different way you are you you are unique that's why you are the coach that you are it's um it's interesting you 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 bring up the uh, the planning and reflective um framework um i mean we, you talk about that in terms of reflection and you kind of say that we can't really plan plan what our behaviors are going to be but in terms of that in terms of that framework it is planning and, and, and reflecting that there's obviously some areas in which us as coaches can go in with um and i think on the framework it says that in terms of coaching behaviors it's problem solving or, or, or problem setting is the continuum that i think bob muir who who created put put in there um so that's i think there's obviously areas in which you can kind of plan that behavior so we can plan that to be more demonstration and show and, and tell if we're going down the RFU route, or we can plan to be more be more questioning. So, I think I think what's 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 really key to bear in mind there is, like you said, is that and I and I, I use this when I was um, when I was chatting to Bob in terms of I've used it on the pod as well. It's, it's actually using that framework as more of a as more of a compass because coaching and coaching, especially adolescents and and I've you know, working in similar environments, it's. It's, it, it's a lot of grey, it's a lot of murky waters that you've got to try and navigate your way through and there's lots of pitfalls and and I think using that, and I think you're absolutely right, I for me now I tend to plan how I want my behaviours to to necessarily, my ideals to go, but then it's that acceptance that, right, that could all go, to, that, that could all go to down, the, down the can. Um, but I guess, that, I guess that's just all got to come with experience, isn't it? It's just got to come with being out on the pitch being out and, and having these chats over a longer period of time it's not there's no magic there's no magic button for it is there no there isn't and we we look at those you know the the, the framework and we we talk about coaching behaviors and because we're highlighting coaching behaviors people saying well this is what i need to do so we're already coming up with an answer before we know what the challenge is and and it's it's not that it's having those tools in there so how good am I at getting my message across really quickly and effectively to these players um, at this level that they're at? So is it an under nines? Is it 14, 15 year olds? Is it 18, 19 year olds? Is it elite level performers? And what sort of demonstrations do I need to give them? What, how's the feedback layered? And also that connects to what the session objectives are. Have I told my nine year olds what the session objectives are because do they care you know they just want to play rugby perhaps or they just want to run around throw something kick a ball that's what they want to do. they want to play games but as they get older they, they want more buy-in and this is where you know is it that we are the um autonomous coach you know um are we at the the so if we think we're going through these stages of learning aren't we and it's the same for the coach so it's very that cognitive stage with, with little ones, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you, I'm going to paint the picture. Then we're going to this associative stage where they've got a little bit of history behind them and they're helping to paint the picture. And then as we get to the elite level performers, they're, they're painting the, fit, the picture for us. And they're, they're asking us to help them frame it and hang it on the wall, so to speak. It's coming, so it more moves from the coach to the performer and then our behaviors may change so our feedback is it just a if we're looking at it from an elite level performer are we just there really as a, an audio feedback of what we've seen because they will know more about how it feels and did it did it work did it not and they're trying to make sense of that but they can't see what we can see so at that stage our behaviors are more observation and, and feedback perhaps, whereas further down the chain, that they, they are more prescriptive, these behaviors. And as I say, with the junior coach, demonstration, you know, dem so introduce, give a little bit of instruction, demonstrate, let them have a go, observe and analyze, get questioning, listening, feedback, that decision-making and to step back, what, what goes next do we let them carry on or do we have to you know do we you know do we move on to the next thing do i have to give more instruction well this, that process is going on isn't it yeah and this is really much, very much back to um 
I haven't when we spoke to Frank Dick, he said, like, as coaches at the start, we're the light. We we give them the answers, we give them demonstrations. And then all of a sudden, you know, we give them the light and we become the mirror. So we're reflecting back. And then lastly, we're casting shadows. So we've got to just move out away completely. And actually, and that's the real challenge for us as, as coaches. And when I say there's no magic button, it's because there isn't. We the, It's through trial and error. And, you know, we can go, and Frank said, we, you, know, you can go back at any point of that process, but it's understanding, but when do I go back? At what point can I, what, where's my entry point back in if they are struggling? And, you know, I think we can all hold our hands up in terms of our coaching journey is that I've made probably hundreds and hundreds of mistakes. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure Chris has. Um, <laughs> but it's for us, for us, as, and, and you know, when you want to develop to that higher, kind of higher order coaching, when you say to coaching, coaching the elite, it's about how quickly can we learn from these mistakes? And, and reflecting on your own coaching behavior is probably one of the one of the toughest things to do and it's probably the last kind of thing on my personal journey that I've actually successfully managed to reflect on because you, like, you pick on the negatives where as human beings we're inherently we're always looking for the negatives but actually it's and actually when I think about my last session now the first thing that comes to my mind in terms of my coaching behaviors is a negative interaction I might have had when actually I forget you forget all those positives that, that you might have how how so when you reflect back how do you kind of do, do you do the 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 two likes and, and one positive when you when you think of it um i oh, sorry the um the old what is it the the shit sandwich yes um, <laughs> it's it, it's really difficult because it's about how we how we take feedback isn't it i think this is the first thing and um and I think I think for me, so I think the first thing is it has to come from self initially, because one of the things that I don't like as a coach is hearing feedback from others. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that I've found the answers myself. And um, and and I, I, I mean, obviously, again, if there's a coach that you value and they're there, a mentor, and they're giving you some you know, words of wisdom, you, you, you soak that in, don't you? But there's other people who are happy to give you feedback and you really don't want it, you don't value it. And, and also it's when when you get that feedback as well, isn't it? You know, Chris talked about um, the reflection side of it and, you know, what, what tools have you got to reflect? And as a steam train comes, <laughs> I do apologize. Um, but, um, yeah, as... It's when, when do we reflect? When are we going to get this feedback? When, you know, can we take this sandwich? You know, when are we going to get value to it? And it can happen at any time. Um, and it's got, and it might be, I think the more we coach, the more it happens. And it's, a, it's what you've just said. You've said, you, you think you've probably made hundreds of mistakes. You've probably made thousands. And I've probably made millions. And... And, and Chris will have, 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 have made none, of course. Um, but this is it. And the reason we'll make these mistakes, and it, and it all goes into our supercomputer, is because we're doing stuff. We're coaching all the time. We're having these interactions. We're thinking about them. So, and and we'll, we'll log certain things. And again, certain ones will, will resonate with us more than others because of our, our feelings, our emotions, our history, the anchors that we have will mean something to us if we coach very little we don't have those anchors and it then only becomes when something bad happens we don't we don't look at the wins we don't go help oh, here's a positive you know take the example i gave you of the the other coaches coming to coach my team we you know we that was that was a positive i will only take positives from that day apart from inwardly thinking of myself and and how i felt and how negative i was and can I stop that from happening again? And, and one of the, the other things that I get with this, Harrison, this is where I'll, I'll, I'll tell a story of yourself now, if you'll, uh, if you'll allow me, is that there was one time you asked me to um, video a coaching session. And, uh, and I'd, I'd, I'd obviously worked with you as, as, as an assistant to you for, for a while. Um, so I'd seen your, your sessions before, but you said, no, today, Neil, I want you to video this session. Um, it's really important for me. So we, we mic'd you up, we, we videoed the session, and at the end you came over and you uttered those immortal words of, 
what do you think of that, Neil? How, how do you think I was as a, as a coach? And, um, and I, I think I actually said that wasn't you coaching then, Harrison. That wasn't authentic. That wasn't, to me as an outsider, that wasn't real. That wasn't the usual Harrison that I see. And, and you seemed a little bit, you know, troubled by this. And, um, and, and it was because you, you didn't swear once in that session when <laughs> sometimes <laughs> there might be a, a, an expletive come out and you were very well behaved. You were very well mannered. Um, your tone was, was really nice with all the performance. Even when things went wrong, you know, not even under your breath did anything come out. This was a, a, a sight to behold. And I think for me, the, the, the reflection, you were asking me for a reflection when all I can say is that's how you coach today. I can't say what your interactions are normally with an individual. I don't know the backgrounds of those 20 odd players that you were working with. I don't know that relationship that you have with them. I don't know how they normally perform for you. I don't know how they perceived your uh, your behaviours on that day. So you, you're then asking somebody who was on, if you like, the other side of a what we'll call the bomb your lenses. I was stepping away. I was just there to record. And that's that's the thing. It's we can only ever get one side of the picture. Coach will know, you know, get their side, their feelings about it. Um, to ask a player, you're dicing with death because you'll get, you'll either get, well, you generally get something nice, what they think, you know, that you want to hear. Will you really get the critical stuff? Will you value the critical stuff? And that's, that's the challenge for us. Sometimes we just will never know. No. I've, ne I've never heard you swear in a coaching session, Harrison. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard you swear either, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was quite an odd one because that was, that was probably the first time I'd ever filmed myself coaching. So, um, and that's, and that is, I think that, that's something quite scary. I think the first time, first time I was doing it. And now it's, now in the environment, I mean, now I probably, you know, I've, I'm filmed most. Well, I feel myself coaching quite quite regularly, so therefore, um, you know, I think you just naturally become more more at home with it when you've got when you've got Neil Holmes with his with his camera and he's, he's listening to everything you're saying. You know, every you know, and you you just I, I was you know that was probably eighteen months into my coaching into my coaching journey. So yeah, um, and it's an interesting story. I think you you, you pre warned us before before coming on that you were gonna you're gonna bring that one up. And and actually, it's you know, I, I've got you know I couldn't agree couldn't agree more. At, at that time, it was probably not very reflective of of me as a coach. But then you know since since hearing that and since coming away from that, you know I'll, you'd probably be coming you me coach now and it'd be completely different. I think that's that's the beauty of of coaching and 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 understanding your environment. Is that now I'm working with sixteen to eighteen year olds. I can't be my expletive self because, um, um, and just 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 to clear up. I am not, I'm not as expletive as, as Neil is making out here. I'm not, you know. It's. <laughs> I think that I think the point we're making is that that you weren't yourself. It was no. it was not when I when I see you coach and you're relaxed, and you just coach. That that is you, and and however you are, is is acceptable because that is you as a coach, and that's what you're bringing to. The, the session and that's why your session will be as successful as they are you and wouldn't be what you're doing now if you weren't you you wouldn't be as successful no and it's really important with that in terms of you know, when when, do, when if coaches are listening to this now and they are being filmed and you know, it's their first time doing it it's it can massively affect your sessions because like we said earlier in terms of like our coaching behaviors if we if we're slightly different as coaches on a, on a particular day to the players the players, no matter how old they are, pick up on those kind of those, those small interactions. So if we are if we are having a bit of a rough day, and you know, you're usually in front of the players, we're nice and bubbly, and we're having a bit of a bit of a crap day, and we and we're quite dismissive of a player. All of a sudden, that player might pick up on that. He might go back into the change room and say, "Oh bloody hell, Neil's on one today. Mm -hmm. We better watch out for the session." And all of a sudden, your session objectives might have just gone out the window because of that one interaction with the player. That you know now all the players are going out there perceiving that that Neil's a bit grumpy. We're going to have a bit of a hard session, and all of a sudden it's it's, and that's I think that's that's the importance. That's the message we're trying to get across here is that 
you know behavior is, it isn't just that showpiece stuff on the pitch it's it's constantly throughout and players are very how they pick up on everything don't they yeah and it, and it, but it is such a difficult thing um because again how we're feeling um how we think that we're portraying ourselves and then how they're feeling on that day and how they're you know it, it's one of these isn't it we talk a, a lot about people hiding their emotions and feelings these days and how it's important to to show and share but it isn't that easy and as i say we you know are we all actors and actresses and it's just a show for that time that we're, we're with them um is that how we behave normally because the other side of this as well not just the learning side but this the the role model side you know we're asking players to be a certain way and act a certain way and we we expect when certainly as they they get older um and and move up the the performance ladder we, we want them to be these models for society don't we? we want them to be holier than thou and you know be, their body is a temple and they you know they go to bed early every night and and all they think about is their sport and nothing else and um but we're asking to do that but then are we acting the same way so it's it, there's so many challenges with behaviors and i think that we only touch the surface when we think right you know there are certain papers that we present to students and there are 11 or 12 coaching behaviors on this sheet and they think that is it and it's as simple as during this session i must have, have, have shown every single one of these behaviors it's it's so much more than that and and there are papers out there and research that shows that um, that coaches have been followed from the minute they come out of their front door to get into training their interactions with other coaches coaches meetings onto the pitch for training post training the interactions with players the interactions with other staff all the way to them going home last thing at night that they followed that whole process to look at serial winning coaches and their behaviors yeah and actually i think um i was just chatting with some coaches that we could be we could be the best versions of ourselves all the time and actually one of those one negative kind of outburst might undo all of that positive that you've done so it's and that's not i'm not trying to scare anyone here but you know it's but it is, it is, it's very complex. You know, so we're dealing with our own um, dynamical systems of, well, we don't probably don't understand our own systems sometimes. So it's, yeah, it's, um, it can be an absolute, it can be a minefield. And I think just the key message here is, is, is being aware, is being aware that it, it does, it does have an impact and, and, you know, ref, and that comes through that reflective process and, and going out and getting lots of experience, uh, experience in coaching. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. It is that just coaches go out and coach more, reflect on your coaching and think about those four areas. Have a session objective, have a plan. What is your structure? And, and don't be afraid to change your structure. You know, have always be th this reflective practice. We talk about reflection in action. It, it's constant because we're, we're trying to look at the best way of 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 the session going well, of our performers um, being engaged and learning and developing to, to move on in that journey. And, and the behaviours that we have towards them um, help with that. But it, it's, it, it's, you know, it's in the moment and that's probably the most powerful thing. But if we don't coach, then we don't get this history. Our toolbox doesn't develop. I think, I think that's a, a valid point, is that we only become more aware of our behaviours the more we actually get out onto the field or onto the court and actually um, be out coaching and taking that time to speak to people afterwards and, and, and learn from that. Um, and, and I think that's that, if that's one of the biggest things that people get from this is actually the best way to be more aware of how we do and what we do is to actually just do it more and reflect upon it, then that's, that's quite a powerful um, learning moment for any coach. Thing. Yeah, I think I think the bottom line. I think once upon a time, I always thought that um, I still believe. I always like to think that I'm the best coach in the world, and I will prepare 
and be the best and provide the best service so that if anything goes wrong, it's the athlete's fault. But actually, I think, you know, it's always it's always your fault. I will have done this. I'll have turned up. I'll have prepared. I'll have planned. If something goes wrong that day, it's it's your fault. That was that was my philosophy, I think. And Harrison's smiling at this. But I think for me, the, the bottom line is actually it's not. It's the other way around. The first place, if a drill goes wrong, that's that's not their fault. That's mine. I've not created the right environment. I've, my behaviours are not conducive with the success of the session, the success of the performer. I've not been able to get the best out of that performer. I've not spoke to them and given them that minute before training. I've not found out what sort of day they're having so that I can maybe adapt and amend something and tailor it towards them, or at least be aware and conscious of something else. So it, whereas in the, in the past, it was all about the, the athlete and it was their fault, blame someone else. I, I, I look at myself first and foremost and, and always look at it of what can I have done differently? How could have I acted differently? No, I, I, I agree. I agree, Neil. Um, Neil, it's been great having you on. Um, I think there's a, a lot of uh, stuff there that coaches will be able to, to take away and, and um, just just more actually become more aware of themselves. And we talked about a lot we had when we had Dan Abrams on around that understanding self and self-reflection, understanding your personality and how they influence what you actually bring to life on the field. But you know, we need to we need to sort of be more aligned to actually the impact that that has on the activity structure that we have, the learner engagement, and then whether we achieve our objectives. Because you're right, you you can always point the finger at other people, but it takes a lot of courage and to to, to look at yourself and go, oh, actually, have I done the best job today? Did I prepare properly for this? Um, and 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 yeah, and, and that the impact that that can have on on our sessions as well. So it's it's been great having you on. I think there'll be a lot of stuff that the coach can take away from that. Well, I've I've loved it, and I can't wait to uh, listen back to it online and tell everybody else that they should be uh, listening to the uh, the big breakdown. Thank you. Oh, it's been a great discussion there on uh, on coaching behaviours um, with with Neil. Um, I think it's important to to point out and maybe ap apologise to a lot of people that uh, <laughs> I was uh, I was a little hungover when we <laughs> when we recorded with Neil. And uh, probably not come across at my best, and I've apologised to him since um, because it was <laughs> not not a, not the best uh, not the best prep for a, a, an important discussion area. Um, but it's uh, listening back. There's some some great bits there that you and uh, you and Neil discussed throughout the episode. Yes, yeah, yeah there, there, there certainly was. Um, like, like we said before before the episode, coaching coaching behaviours can really underpin how how a session goes um how an environment is and 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 ultimately the culture um i think neil touched on some good points around um you know when we are coaching we're dealing with you know dynamical systems i.e players and they can be very they can be very complex and it goes back to like what we've discussed from season one is is understanding who we are coaching and you know and understanding that they're right they are complex and one day they might be they might be they might be great they might be enjoying they might be they can't wait to be there but they might be or one day they might have an absolutely awful day in which in which they're really down in the dumps they've had a tough day at work you know, it's, it's it's raining it's just not it's just not clicking so right what can we do as what can what how can i as a coach ensure that my behaviors are you know positive uplifting are they pulling players in are they you know one you know encouraging the players to be there and i think our, our behaviours really do affect that learner engagement as much as the session designer, which we've discussed previously. Yeah, well, but that whole notion of dynamical systems you would very much associate with an activity structure of how you're going to deliver a session based on the outcomes that you want to get. But Neil made a great point that everyone is different. And, and we kind of touched on it in season two with, with Richard around the importance of understanding your people and, and having them one minute conversations beforehand is that that how we behave and how we act can massively impact on the general view, feeling, ability towards that actual goal that we want. And we need to try and find that balance that everyone within that group, you could have 30 people within that group. You know, you've got to make sure that you're trying to connect with everyone to drive the activity structure and maintain high learner engagement. Yeah, and, and, and Neil touched on that within, within the episode, right? Uh, you know, every player needs to have some sort of engagement with a coach, whether that's pre, post, or during the session. Now, if you've got a squad of 45 
you're not likely to be on your own unless you're unlucky for that one evening. You're likely to have co-coaches. Now we have to share that balance and actually have that understanding of right. And what I really liked about Neil was that you know, he touched on like us as coaches. It's, it's being like self-aware again. We we touched on it throughout throughout the season. I think is that well, my my coaching behaviors are different to another coach, but that doesn't mean that they're wrong. You know, it enables us to have those connections with players. It enables us for like a player to feel right. I feel comfortable going to Harrison because there's a strong connection there. It's not that I dislike like me and you coaching Chris. It's not that I dislike Chris. It's just that, right, there are some players that are, you know, we're human beings. We na- we naturally gravitate to different human beings. That's how that's how we make friends. That's that's how we, you know, that's, that's how we converse. That's how we get on in life. You know, and then it's that acceptance that I might be good at something and my behaviours might be a real positive in another environment and another coach might be different elsewhere. But, I mean, there's a great example we, we can use as the example of how when me, you and, and Quinny were coaching at, at end scenes, we all complemented each other differently and we all used them strengths to work in different ways if we know that a player needed a bit of an, an arm around them then we knew sometimes you send Quinny in sometimes to go and help pick them back up again because he was exceptional at doing that when it and then why me go and do it when I know that's that Quinny can do it 10 times better and that will have a more positive impact and, and that sometimes you, you need to be aware of not only your own strengths and weaknesses but the ones within the group that's going to help really lift them players to get the best out of them because we, we that's the hardest bit, isn't it? It's, it's how we're going to make sure that we can get the best out of our players every time we've got an interaction with them. Yeah, and that's, and that's, and that's you know, it's so, so important. I think well, the other thing... Reflection, reflection in general was was one key thing across the other episode, though, wasn't it, of, of how we re- reflect not only on, on that element and what works well, but also then how we can use our behaviours to reflect on the activity structure, learning engagement, and then link that back to the, the plan and reflective framework that um, Bob Muir, one of his colleagues at Leeds Beckett, sort of introduced um, a, a few years ago. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's a model that you and I are quite familiar with, and it's the model that underpins how I, how I plan sessions now. Um, you know, and, and, that, and that reflective piece is, is, is huge, and I think... What's really important to, to be aware of as a coach is that when we reflect on our coaching behaviours, it's not necessarily that you know, we can go straight to a negative, like, like we touched on, but we can go straight to, oh, I had a negative interaction that was because of X, Y, and Z. Well, you're forgetting all the positive interactions that you have. You know, and it's the same with players. Players will go straight to the negative of their performances before their positives, right? Can you come away from a session and think, yeah, if, it, if you feel overwhelmingly negative, you've got to ask yourself, Why? And obviously, and quite often, that goes back to right. You've had a bit of a tough day, but then it goes, but then it goes further back. So, right, we had a conversation with Dan Abrahams in season two around can we put our coach face on? And a coach face is, is massively important, and how we and how we present ourselves to players is integral to to us earning the trust and the respect from them as well. Now, if they know me as Harrison is a, is, a, is a nice bubbly coach, you know, who they see me all the time and I'm, I always say hello, I always shake their hands and, you know, and, and give them a fist bump. Now, if I don't do that for one session and one player sees it because I've, I'm a bit grumpy in the car or, I'm, you know, all of a sudden that player will go back into the change room and say, oh, Harrison's on a mood today. And that can really put a damper on everything. So this is where it's, I don't, I said, we said this, I don't, it, it's not about scaring coaches. It's just making them sure that they're aware of, like even the smallest of interactions, even the smallest of behavioural changes that we might present to players, they pick up on it. And that's and I'm oh, you know I think the key message there is, is that is is the awareness is the awareness of right if I'm usually the first at training, the first 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 to arrive and first to leave, and if I change that behaviour and and the, and we break that routine, players become acutely aware. And then that's when they start to wander, and wandering is it, it can lead down to it can lead down awful paths. I agree, and it's something that we always touch on around you know the behaviours that we expect of players in sessions, and and that's talked about quite a lot uh, within coaching and coach education as well. But actually, how often do we sit back, reflect, and talk about the impact that our behaviours? as we coach and deliver have have on a group and, and he actually neil touched on the point in the episode around when he observed you coaching for your video for what i think was for your level three and uh, today you could argue that's another guest that's potentially trying to throw you under the bus harrison it's coming 
becoming quite few and frantic at the moment. But but he made a valid point that actually when you were, you know, because that wasn't working towards the qualification that you wanted, did you consciously or subconsciously present a different view? And was that noticeable to everyone? It, it's interesting because you only see that when you start to record yourself. And I think we probably need to, uh, I think we should always, uh, as a coach in practice in general, if you want to get better, the best way to get better is to watch yourself and reflect back and record and see actually what you do and how you do it because you might have what um it's like the the glass shattering moment of a behavior that you weren't aware of that you did yes yeah i've got uh, i think i've got very defensive in in the episode um i don't swear that often i'll just re repeat that again um because you know out of all the episodes that we've had to make expl uh, explicit on this podcast is because of the words that come out of Chris's mouth rather than mine. Um, Not just me, there's some of our words. <laughs> yeah, but, it's, but it does raise a really interesting point around, you know, like I said, that was the first time I'd ever been filmed coaching. And like you see, it was working towards a level three, so therefore my, my behaviour has changed. Now, did that lead to a stronger impact with the players or did it lead to a, a less impact? Well, I was still happy with my, my session objectives, but... I mean, they could obviously tell. Um, yeah, so it's, it's interesting, and, and and I would like to say I would I would encourage people to coaches to film themselves a little, a little bit more just to get used to that and get that glass shattering moment. And if you can't do that, I think um, uh, Simon Amor, the former England attack coach, once recommended just even just like putting your iPhone, putting your phone in your pocket, and then putting the voice note on, and then listening back to everything that you say and all your interactions. Because that's another that's another way in which you can have that that, that glass shattering moment. If you do want to see that video, Harrison, of you coaching, I still have it on the camera, so um, you know we can uh, we can upload that to YouTube and put a, a link at the bottom as well, so people can see what what that's like. Um, but another, another good episode, I think. I think there's uh, despite my um, poor hosting duties for this week, I think it's been a, a, an important episode. That I think a lot of coaches will will take a lot away from. Just don't, record yes. the episode, just don't record the episode in a pub. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, um, yeah, it was a yeah, a cracking episode. Many thanks to Neil, and um, yeah, onwards and upwards. Yeah, we'll be back in two weeks' time for uh, for episode eight. Uh, we've got our last two uh, two big guests before we have our uh, season review coming up, and uh, it's another uh, cracking episode. Um, so look out for that. Charlie's got all our social detail, social media details at the end. Um, I think I need to get another pint of me, and we will see you next time. Cheers for listening. Don't forget to join in the discussion at Big Breakdown HQ on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thank you.